Now that you've downloaded the exam guide, I want to walk you through it and talk about some of the key features as it relates specifically to this course and how I've chosen to structure it. And so I've got the platform App Builder exam guide open and it's for the winter 17 release at the time of this recording. And usually one thing to point out is that the exams usually don't have brand new features in them. The way Salesforce operates is they tend to allow time before the latest and greatest features make their way onto the full-blown exam. And what they do is they actually vet questions or test out questions in the maintenance exams for existing certification holders. That's my theory at least, and I think that's correct. No one from Salesforce has ever confirmed that. But what it seems like is that those of us that are certification holders, when we have to renew our certification three times a year, we take a maintenance exam, and it is there that the newest features of the platform appear. Now the maintenance exams where we renew three times a year, those are quote unquote open book and not proctored and so we can Google answers, look at the release notes, and that is Salesforce's way to enforce certified individuals to keep up to date on the platform. And so if you don't renew your certification, in a timely fashion. They email you and they warn you well in advance and you will know what the deadline is to renew once you are certified. But if you fail to renew, then you will lose your certifications. And so when you try to verify your certifications, it'll show no active credentials on file. And so for this exam guide, I want you to know that if your current instance is spring 17, you're going to be fine going through this course. And so I know that I'm recording and speaking well into the future, but speaking from experience of having done the admin course, I've had students now that we are in the winter 17 release wanting to know if they're going to fail the test because some of the lectures were geared towards spring 16. And so there seems to be a two to three release cycle lag between new features being implemented and then making their way onto the full-blown certification exam. And so just bear in mind that on the maintenance exams are where the new features appear, so you do not need to worry about what release you're on, trust me. And as Salesforce makes updates, I am committed to updating this course to the best of my ability. And so please do let me know if you see something that's out of date. And so enough on all that, let's talk about the exam guide, shall we? And so scrolling past the contents and about the credential, there's some good information there, purpose of the exam, blah, blah, blah. So then the audience, you can, Feel free to read through all that. So one thing I want to highlight though is that a candidate for this exam is not expected to be able to administer Sales Cloud or Service Cloud. They're not expected to have programmatic development experience such as Apex, Visual Force, etc. They're not expected to design custom interfaces using Visual Force and they're not expected to design custom Lightning components using Apex or JavaScript. So you do not need to know how to code in order to pass this certification. So moving onward about the exam, useful information here, 60 multiple choice, multiple select questions, the passing score is 63%, which is a lot harder than it sounds like at this point, trust me. Registration fee, US dollars of 200, retake fees, $100, time allotted 90 minutes. And so the delivery options, which we will discuss more later at the tail end of this course, I'll show you how to set up your webcam if you want to take the test remotely from home, or you can go on site at a testing center to do a proctored exam. The online exams are proctored as well, which means someone will be actively watching you through a webcam for the full 90 minutes and making sure you're not cheating. It's a good Good safety measure to make sure that the certifications mean something. The main thing though as far as how this course is structured, you will want to hone in on this section 5 exam outline. And so if you notice, if you look at the outline of this course that I've put together and you look at the exam outline in the study guide, I follow along this exam outline step by step. The first primary section of this course is Salesforce Fundamentals and so that is there that 8% weighting of the exam is around Salesforce Fundamentals and so each of these bullet points I have looked at and rolled over in my mind and looked for examples and figured out ways to demonstrate and speak to each of these core bullet points that you will need to be able to understand in order to get this 8% of the exam. And then I've done the same for each section of the exam guide. 
and I've made a section for each in this course. So the next section of the course is data modeling and management, which is a pretty large chunk of the certification. It accounts for 20% of the exam, and so that section is a larger section in this course. There's more bullet points here, and so you've got to be able to handle these sorts of scenarios in order to pass. And so data modeling and management is next. After data modeling and management, security is next, which accounts for 10% of the exam. We'll be going through these bullet points so that you understand the concepts around security, and that's where we get into profiles, roles, permission sets. I explain the difference between profiles and roles, and that's where we get into organization-wide defaults and sharing settings and field-level security, visibility, manual sharing, all sorts of things there that you need to understand in order to handle those types of questions on the exam. Then the next section in the exam guide is business logic and process automation. This is by far the largest section of the exam, 27%. So it is a large section in this course correspondingly and because there's a lot of really not complex, well, somewhat complex bullet points here, but it's really intertwined and involved. When you get into business logic and process automation, this is really where Salesforce is strong because you're able to have things happen based on configurable settings that you can do and not have to resort to code. And so this is where we'll be getting into record types and formula fields and validation rules and approval processes. And then some of the really cool things that I've always liked with Salesforce are workflow rules and there's a lot of power behind those and then some of the newer things such as visual workflow and process builder and then we're also going to go into how to decide which of those options to use when there's a lot of confusion around where the line begins and ends for when you should use a workflow rule versus when you should use a visual workflow versus when you should use a process builder versus when you should use apex code and so my goal is to make that clearer in your mind so that you can handle handle those sorts of scenarios on the exam. And then as well, other things such as this ramifications of field updates and the potential for recursion. We'll go into all that in that section. And then a much lighter section, but still important on the exam, is this 3% waiting for the social features of Salesforce. And so there's a short section related to social, and I show you how to tie in Twitter and Facebook into Salesforce and how that works. And so then you will be able to describe the capabilities and use cases for social features. So towards the tail end of the course and of this exam guide user interface, a large portion of the exam waiting of 14%. That's where we get into lightning components and custom buttons and links and actions and different user interface design capability. And so then the final 10% of the exam deals with reporting and mobile. And so those are the final sections of the course that correspond with the exam guide here. So now you can see how I've structured this course and it's to correspond with the sections of the exam guide. And then at the tail end of the exam guide, there's the sample exam questions. I do have lectures for each one of these questions specifically. And I go in the order for these where the different topics are addressed in the course. And so I think the first one that we will address a little bit later in this course is question number three and it's related to the app exchange and so those give you a good flavor of how the questions appear on the exam and I follow up some lectures specifically with these sample exam questions because these are ones that Salesforce provides publicly and so I don't provide like exam dumps so please don't ask but I did want to at least show you the ones that are publicly shared by Salesforce so you can get familiar with how the questions are worded how to approach questions and how to glean what the right answers are strategically and so if you just hang with me through this course and begin to understand the core concepts that are represented in these concepts then you'll do fine. So once again, you can download the exam guide from certification.salesforce.com. I've made the link available as well in the resources section of the lecture. And next, we're going to sign in and complete the Lightning Experience Migration Assistant.